Hello, my name is Joel Crest. I'm a developer with Econo Systems, and today I'm going to do a walk through the process of customizing content query web parts by using custom properties in Office SharePoint Server 2007. I'm sitting on a SharePoint Server 2007 site to which I've added a document library called Project Status Reports. And I've associated a content type that I've created, a type Project Status Report, with this document library. And the Project Status Report content type has several different columns that I've created and associated with it. Project Name, Project Status, Project Status Summary, and Project Owner. And if we come in here and look at the properties of one of the items that's currently in the document library, we can see for project status, I've got three choices. On track, might need attention, and requires attention. Now what I want to do today is I want to, back here on the home page of this site, I want to add an instance of the content query web part that's going to allow me to display those projects in the project status reports document library whose status is set to requires attention. So the first thing I'm going to do is to choose to edit the page. And then I'm going to come down here and in the top zone, um, web part zone, I'm going to choose to add a web part. I'm going to select the content query web part and say add. And at that point there, I get the content query web part added to the top zone, web part zone, showing its default list of the site content here. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to set some of the properties of this instance of the content query web part. So I'm going to come in here and on the edit menu, choose to modify a shared web part. And that causes the content query web part tool pane to be displayed over here. And I can come in here and expand the query category. And if I come down then, I can select to show items from the following list. So I want to specifically choose the Project Status Reports document library here and say OK. So that'll, that'll limit the query that the content query web part will use, or, or rather the list that the content query web part will query from for items to that document library. And for the list type, I'm going to choose document library. And then I'm going to select my Project Status Reports group that I created when I created a content type and choose the content type of Project Status Report. Now the next thing I want to do also is down here under the appearance, I want to change the title of the content query web part to projects to watch. And then go ahead and say OK. So at this point here now, I get the content query web part still here, and now it's listing off all of the documents that currently live in that document library. The title is Projects to Watch, and it's listing off all three of them because I'm not filtering at all on the contents of the document library. So now that I've added an instance of the content query web part to my home page and done some initial configuration of it, I want to now go ahead and modify some of the custom properties of the web part that I can't get at through the user interface for the tool pane. So I'm going to choose to export this instance of the content query web part to a local folder here on my hard drive. Say so save. Okay, now at this point here I can go ahead and edit um, that web part file. So if I come over here to SharePoint Designer, come in here, I can choose to open that web part file. And you can see it's just an XML file with a bunch of markup in it that describes the property settings of that instance of the content query web part. So what we're going to do in here now is modify some of these custom properties to alter the behavior of the content query web part. And so the first thing we're going to do is look for the query override property. So let's say find next. We can come down here and find that. And what I want to do is replace the current setting for that property, which is nothing, with my own value. So what the query override property allows us to do is to specify a custom qu uh, query to the web part, content query web part, to tell it what items to pull back. And so what we're doing here inside of C data block is specifying some XML markup to tell it to pull back um, just those items from our document library who have a project status value equal to requires attention. And then it's going to order the results set that it brings back for the items uh, by the created date in descending order. So this allows us then to pull back just those items. Now you'll notice here also that I'm specifying for the column name, um, which is project space status. I'm encoding the space 
like this. And the way I figured out that I needed to do that was to look at how SharePoint refers to this column by its internal name. I know offhand that SharePoint encodes spaces with this value here, but I could also look um, and find out for sure what the encoding is by looking at the properties, um, the settings for this uh, site column that I've created called project status. And if I go look at the properties page for that project status site column in the URL displayed in the browser of the field query string, I can see the actual internal name as used by SharePoint. And that's what I need to specify in here when I'm referring to columns or fields. I need to use the SharePoint internal name as it's encoded by SharePoint. So the next field we're going to modify, our next property we're going to modify is the common view fields property, and it's right here. So let's go ahead and replace that with our own value. And so what we're doing is we're setting that equal to a name of a column here and a data type. And so what the common view fields property allows us to do is to specify additional fields that we want the content query web part to pull back from items um, in the list that it's working with. Um, by default, the content query web part does not pull back um, the values of all the items or the values of all the fields um, of the items that it's, it's pulling back from the query that we're telling it to use here. So if we want to be able to display our project status summary content here um, and, and have the content query web part render that information, we need to tell it to pull back that field. So the way we do that is we set a value of the column name, again, with these spaces encoded here, um, and then the data type separated by a, a column or a comma here um, and then delimited with a semicolon. So if I wanted to specify multiple columns or fields here, what I could do is chain them along by having the internal column name, comma, data type, semicolon, and then just repeat that pattern. Okay, so the next property we're going to look for and modify is the data column renames property. And we're going to replace the value again with our own. What the data column renames property allows us to do is to map our own column names to values uh, that are used by the default XSL transformation um, style sheets that are used by the content query web part to actually do the formatting of the items that it's going to render. So the default transformation um, out of the box knows how to, how to render a um, a parameter or a value called description with that name there. And so by mapping our own internal column name here, project status summary to the description field, what that allows us to then do is to use the default XSL transformations without having to modify them to then work with our schema here for our content library. And so by doing it this way, we get that kind of essentially for free. So we can use the custom styles or the default styles rather that come out of the box. And instead of displaying a description um, text, since we don't have a description column for our content type, we're going to replace that with the value of our project status summary field. Okay, so at this point here, we can go ahead and save our changes to our file. Okay, so I'm back over here on my SharePoint Server 2007 site to which I added the initial instance of the Content Query web part. And we can see that this instance is still pulling back all items from the Project Status Reports document library. I'm going to remove this instance, delete it. And then I'm going to go up and import the Modify Customize instance that we just created by editing the .web web part file. So I'm going to choose to import. If I come over here now on the add web parts tool pane, I can choose to browse for that file. And here it is. I'm going to go ahead and grab that, choose to upload it. And now that it's uploaded it successfully, I'm going to choose to add it to the top zone back where I had the initial instance, choose import. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. If we now scroll down, and look at the top zone here. We see that we have our web part here with our title. And we notice now that it's only pulling back um, the one item out of the documents library, the, the uh, Project Status Reports document library that has a status of um, requires attention. And so it's showing the default link. And it's also now pulling back the project status summary text as well, because we mapped that to the description field that the default rendering transformation, XSL transformation code was using. So by adding an instance of the Content Query web part to our home page and setting some initial properties on it to configure it to work with our Project Status Reports document library and our Project Status Report content type, we were then able to export that instance of the Content Query web part to a .web part file, edit that .web part file, and override some of the values for the query override 
common view fields and data column renames properties to customize the behavior of the content query web part. And then we were able to then import that customized version of the content query web part back to our homepage and get it to display just those items from our document library that we wanted to see. In this case here, just those items that have a project status of requires attention. 